If you're a real estate investor and a wholesaler and you've gotten your first couple deals on your belt and now you're wondering, how do I scale this business? How do I do more? Obviously, marketing is a, co a component of doing more and getting more deals. But you also have to think about the people aspect of the business. Who do you hire first? How do you pay them? And all that other stuff are things that you're probably thinking about. And what I want to do here in this video is give you a very simple plan and a simple direction that now you can take and start to grow your team without expanding too much in terms of overhead. Because in the beginning, yes, you do need extra help, but you don't want to put yourself in a position where now you've got so many bodies in your organization that now it's costing you money and now you're like this here. So in this video, I'm going to give you the three person ultimate team to be able to scale your business, to grow it without incurring a bunch of overhead. And I'm gonna do that here from my laptop and let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about scaling your real estate wholesaling business. So the first question is really, who do you hire first? Who do you put first uh, in your list of people to hire? Well, there's a couple options and I'm gonna lay these out individually. And then so that way you can determine what's best for you and I'm gonna give you my recommendation. So. A lot of people migrate to initially saying, hey, I want to hire the acquisitions person first. I want to get the acquisition off of my hands as soon as possible. And I think that this is a mistake. I think this is a mistake because the problem with this is that this is the most important part of your real estate business uh, right now. This is the thing that you finally got off the ground, you've done a couple of deals, and now you're in a position where now you can maybe uh, create a, a much bigger income, maybe quit your job. And so why would you want to take your hands off of the most important part of your real estate business, which is the speaking with sellers and doing deals? So... I believe that this is not the first thing that you delegate. Now, there's 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 another one here that I should have put here, uh, not the acquisitions person, that could be a secondary hire, but that could be handled by the admin. So I kind of maybe mix them together. But I don't think that you should go out and go out and hire an acquisitions person that you're going to pay 10 to 15% of whatever it is that you're making in order to scale your business. Because what what will happen is that you likely have a bunch of admin stuff that you're dealing with right now, a bunch of miscellaneous crap that you're having to deal with on an everyday basis that's really uh, holding you back from doing more and from following up on more leads and doing more deals. Uh, but you got to get those things off your plate. So I don't believe that the acquisitions person should be the first person you hire. The first person you hire would be an admin person. You know, I, I listened to an audio from a guy named Rick Sapio who uh, had interviewed. He took the time to interview a bunch of millionaires and billionaires and, uh, what, and, and try to figure out what the commonalities were between all of them. But one of the things that he said that uh, was, was one of the common things was that every, all of them had a lifetime uh, personal assistant, a lifetime executive assistant. And, it, and when you look at any successful CEO, which is what you, uh, what you are becoming, um, they have somebody that's a right-hand person that takes care of all the stuff, all the crap that they don't like to do that holds them back from doing the thing that only they can do and the most important thing. And that's what you want to do. You want to be able to get all that crap off of your hands and off of your plate so that you can focus on the most important thing in your business, which is in the beginning is finding more deals, closing more deals, getting more better pricing on your deals, selling them for more money. That's where the money's at initially. And so then um, you that's where I recommend that you you get uh, you, you do your first hire, which is the admin person. So what are some of the things that that initial that admin person can do well they can help you with a lot of the admin stuff associated with your marketing uh, general administrative stuff for sending out photos of properties to buyers posting properties on websites posting properties on google drive or dropbox and generating links uh, coordinating closings coordinating showings if you got to show the property and you got to coordinate with the owner and with the tenant and with the buyer and then and then making sure that everybody's on the same page and everything else i mean somebody could be doing that for you while you are uh on the phone negotiating more deals and putting more more things in in the uh, in the queue so that you can close and be able to make more money now um the other thing that i didn't write down here that a competent um, administrative person can do, uh, and, I, and and we want to talk about competency is uh, lead uh, lead follow up, right? So let's say for example that you could have leads that you you talk to somebody today, and let's say that they're not ready to do something just yet. So we have what we call long term follow up. 
And this is just people that were interested to see if, hey, have, are you ready to sell the property now? So you could have a general admin person that uh, in the queue that will call all those people this week that uh, perhaps were interested in selling at some point, but maybe they, they, it's just the timing isn't there. And that person could call them and say, hey, I know you spoke with Chris the other uh, about a month ago, a couple of weeks ago about selling your property. It sounded like you weren't ready. I was wondering if you might be ready now to consider selling your property and would like an offer on it. And that's it. And if they say, yes, you know what? Things have changed. I would like that. Then they would say, great. Let me put you in contact with Chris. Let me see if I can get go ahead and uh, either transfer you now or set up a time where he can call you. And that way you guys can discuss it. And that's it. Now you got somebody else helping you with that. What about what about when leads come in? And we have this all the time. Facebook leads come in. We do a lot of Facebook advertising for motivated sellers. Go ahead and click on the link in the descriptions here and you can see more information about that. But what we can do is we can have a, a um, administrative person initially uh, reach out to those leads and to get that basic initial information about the property and its condition and the bed bedrooms and baths. Sometimes with leads, uh, depending on the marketing channel, and they all have uh, this happens with all of them. Um, if because you, you, you can have somebody call you with a postcard from a postcard, they'll uh, they'll raise a hand and say yes, I'm interested. And then you try to reach out to them, but you just can't get a hold of them. So it might take you two or three days of text messaging them and maybe calling them and maybe you play phone tag and then you finally get them on the phone and you get that basic information about the property, its condition and, you know, what they're asking. Uh, but what if you had somebody else doing that for you? So when you finally get on the phone with somebody, then it's really uh, a person that is the best qualified lead potentially or the best prospect. And now you're going to get on the phone with them and really and, and just negotiate those deals with that individual versus chasing a bunch of people down. So that is another one I'm going to put here. Initial lead follow-up here. A, another way of, do, of, uh, of, of, of using that administrative person. So I'm, I'm of the uh, mindset that you hire this person first because what happens is if you hire the acquisitions person first and you put them to call sellers, they're not going to be as good as you. You forgot to train them. So that's going to take even more time from you. And in the meantime, if they're not doing as good of a job as you, that means it's not going to close as many people as you. That means that then you're going to have a dip in your income. So it's not the best ideal solution. The best ideal solution is to hire the admin person that will then allow you to stay in the acquisitions person role and allow you to get more deals, allow you to put more money in the bank. And then, then at that point, then um, at some point later on in the future, then you could decide about the acquisitions person. Now, um, you could hire this position. This is the person that would help you in disposing of your deals. But if you're just starting out, you don't have a list of, you know, a gazillion buyers. You're still trying to feel your way around the market. So I, you're going to end up doing these two positions, really, uh, initially. So that means that then your primary position and the most important position that you can hire for right now is going to be your administrative person. Now, where do you find them and how do you pay them? Well, where, by the way, this tool that I'm using is a list is a tool called Dynalist.io. If you're interested, you can check that out. And it's a great tool. I use that to make outlines and make my notes about a bunch of different things. I use it every day. So you can hire them direct. So you can go to Upwork.com. You can go to OnlineJobsPH.com. And you can hire someone directly from one, any one of those two sites. Tip here, this is going to be more of uh, people in the Philippines. So this is going to be overseas. And this is going to be a combination of, you know, overseas and also local uh, U.S.-based talents, right? Um, now, you can also hire them with a service. Uh, now, with a service that um, will provide the virtual assistant, but it's in it's in in house with them, meaning that you're you're paying the company, you're not paying the individual, and then now they're going to provide you with a VA that sits in their office, that works, they monitor, etc. Now, if you're if you're doing it like this, right, it's good, it is going to be more expensive. You're going to pay more money for the same virtual assistant here. You're going to have better quality control, especially if it's overseas. Uh, and, and typically when you're hiring a service, uh, it's going to provide the virtual assistant. That's going to be uh, a service that's going to provide an overseas virtual assistant. So um, it is going to be more expensive. You're going to pay more per hour, more in general. Typically, I, I find them to be about $1,100 to $1,500 a month. They're going to need a certain number, minimum number of hours. Yeah, uh, you are going to have better quality control. And because of the fact that also they may have them come into their office to work, 
work, which means you have uh, better, uh, more stable internet access and you don't have to deal with a lot of the, uh, sometimes the, uh, overseas can be flaky until you find the right person. Um, and they are better trained. Sometimes the uh, assistant, virtual assistant service will, will provide to that VA uh, a base amount of training so that it enables the VA to, um, uh, to at least come to you with a base and then you can then train them specifically on how you'd like to do the business, right? So um, that's where you find them. Um, now, um, what to pay? My, my, um, it's tough because I've, if you're going to hire here, um, you're just going to have to, I, I think if you're going to hire here, now I'm going to, I'm going to put here another one here, uh, which I believe is still, um, I've hired from here before, virtual staff finder.com and what this is this is like a headhunting service um, for VAs and the headhunting service here for VAs is where you are going to pay let's say if I click on get started and I, I don't I'm not affiliated with that with them you pay a $495 one-time fee and they source them for you so that service is kind of an in-between like you don't want to go out here and hire that hire it yourself hire the VA yourself and sift and sort and go through that whole process and maybe I'll do a video on on how to find somebody here on Upwork if you want go ahead and uh, make a comment if you think you'd like for me to do some videos on that um, uh, so so the virtual staff finder is kind of in the middle uh, we'll call this one headhunter right a headhunter headhunter service and uh, that will be here more kind of in the middle, right? So the headhunter service is here, that's 495 for them to find you a VA, but then you have to pay, you know, whatever you're gonna pay for the VA. So it's a one-time fee, that, but now that VA is, is someone that you control, they don't work for anybody else, you, you've gotta pay them directly, et cetera. And um, if you're doing online jobs, PH, you're typically paying them direct, right? Um, if you're uh, on Upwork, then you're typically are paying them uh, paid via Upwork uh, platform, right? So you're paying them there. So this has more security than this here, because here you just it's a it's, it's a it's a posting board, uh, and uh, so you don't you have the least amount of control here. Headhunting service. Um, kind of similar to this, except you don't have to go through the process of interviewing and all that other stuff. They're going to do it for you. Now, um, in terms of here, um, uh, this is kind of like if, if you want to, I'm always kind of predisposed to this. I'd rather hire a service that I know is going to go ahead and give me a good VA. Um, and so it just depends on your budget. Um, if you have the budget, I would recommend a service. If you don't have the budget, then of course you have to go with one of these options. Now, how much do you pay them? If you're going to hire somebody from the Philippines, you're going to pay typically four $500 a month. Uh, could be more depending on, you know, but typically it just depends on the individual. So I would pay, I, I paid as much as 800. Um, if you're, if you're using a service, then, um, full time, right? Uh, if you're using the service, full time is going to be about, uh, I would say about 1100 uh, to um, probably 1300 per month. So you can see the difference there. And sometimes with these services, you can, uh, uh, with the service, you can do part-time and you'll end up spending about the same that you would have probably with a full-time if you would have hired them from online jobs PH. Um, um, <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Now keep in mind is this with Upwork, you can hire somebody that there's a couple other nuances and i'm thinking of these as we're working through this here with this here you're going to hire somebody full-time all right with this here you're going to have somebody either full-time or you're going to have somebody uh, 20 hours but you're going to have a certain set number of hours you got to be really know and, and have a plan for what you're going to outsource to this person the same thing with the headhunter service you're going to have to have hey you know 40 hours a week that's what they're expecting when you do upwork you're able to hire somebody piecemeal, which is okay if you need some somebody to do a, a little bit here, a little bit there, but nothing takes the place of having somebody that you can hire, you know, for a full 20 hours a week, 40 hours a week, and they're working on your business and they have a chance to really understand and spend time with you and understand your business. And then you're going to get the best ROI long term from that particular hire versus just hiring somebody to do something for you for a couple of hours. And then that's it. You don't need them anymore. And then now you got to go find that person again or hire somebody um, again the next time you need that task. So now you can hire an Upwork for, um, 
You can hire on, on Upwork long-term positions, but most of the time you're going to find here more piecemeal work versus here is full-time work. All right, um, as, a, as the same thing is here, full-time work, and then this is more either part-time 20 hours or full-time 40 hours. I prefer full-time when all said and done. If you can't, if you can't afford full-time, then maybe continue to work and do things on your own until you get enough to that you can hire uh, somebody full-time uh, to be able to handle things for you. Um, and um, now the difference between uh, the pricing, if you get somebody but US space is $15 per hour, now, in general, how much should you pay in general? Look, I'm of the mindset that you get what you pay for. So if you pay really, really cheap, you're going to have somebody that you're going to have to detail specifically everything that needs to get done, exactly how it needs to get done. And that is task work. And it's difficult to scale when you're, when you're outsourcing tasks. It's easier to scale when you're outsourcing outcomes. If you tell the VA or whoever you're working with, whether it be a U.S.-based VA, or so the US based VA is going to be more on Upwork, right? That's where you're going to find your US based VA. So you're going to find somebody that potentially you might have them work for 10 or 20 hours a week. Um, but, uh, you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to spend, you know, 15 bucks an hour. Now the benefit to spending 15 bucks an hour is that you can tell them, look, I have a seller and I have the buyer. I'm trying to get them to uh, coordinate an appointment. I also need to make sure the tenant is there and I gotta get the Photoshop, the, the photo guy also to be there at the same time. Can you help me with that? Now, in that a higher level VA, somebody that you're paying more money is gonna have a better head on their shoulders, which are gonna be, they're gonna be able to, to do that uh, much better and be able to help you uh, in a much better way with that versus a you know VA, if you're gonna try to hire a VA for $400 full time or $300 full time in the, in the Philippines, you're just going to get somebody who's going to be very mechanical. They're going to be, you're going to have to dictate specifically to them everything you're doing step by step. Um, and it's going to be hard for you uh, to scale. Um, it, it might work in the interim if you got a lot of different processes that need to get done in your business and you're just, they're going to do it a particular way each and every time. But um, if you want to scale long term, you really need people that can think on their own and can have, um, you know, that, that can that can, you know, just be able to give you better help. So now let's go on to the next one here. Um, and the next one here is what is a simple three person team? Simple three person team is you, an admin person, and then eventually in acquisitions. But in the beginning, it's just you. Next, you hire an admin person. All right, to come next to you and be able to help you um, and, and be there side by side. I would rather you hire, I would rather you spend the money to hire an admin person that is full time, right? That you're spending a decent amount of money for that individual, whether they be overseas or whether they be uh, in the U.S., but somebody full time. And then at the very, very end, then you will finally get an acquisitions person. But you can almost also argue that if the, if this is three, we can make the acquisitions person 3B. We can make a 3A. And the 3A is going to be a lead manager, right? Somebody who's going to help you in following up with leads, with having those initial conversations, with chasing people down. And then eventually when they get to the point where now, hey, this is a, a, a good prospect, now you're going to get on the phone with them. And, you know, keep in mind is that another thing that I didn't mention with the admin person is, um, let's see here, uh, what did I put here? Uh, examples is uh, sending contracts, right? So if you're sending contracts via HelloSign, uh, or DocuSign to a seller, if you have, you know, wouldn't it be great if you got off the phone with a seller and you said, okay, great, let me go ahead and send you the offer. You tell the VA, hey, we need to send a contract for this person, 35K, our standard procedure, please do it right away. And they know exactly what to do. You get on the phone back with another seller, you put another deal down. You know, those are things that could really help you. And so then that's why I recommend um, you leaving this position last. Um, before you hire, um, so you want to hire the admin person first, maybe the lead manager, maybe the lead manager and the admin, admin person could be one and the same, but you leave the acquisition person for last. That's my recommendation. There you have it. That is my quick and dirty uh, synopsis of, hey, 
Who should you hire first when you're starting out and you got some money, you've made your first deal? Should it be an acquisitions? Should it be an admin? You hear, you heard what I said. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me if you agree or disagree. Let me know what you think. And also as well, make sure that you check out one of the videos that is going to appear right here and check them out. And as always, make sure you hit the notification bell. Give me a like, give me a like and hit a comment. Make me a comment. Let me know you care.